بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا اسپیشیز ٹیکسون وتھ ریفرنس ٹو پاپولیشن ٹیکسانومی پاپولیشن اسٹرکچر نیو سسٹمیٹکس اینڈ سپر اسپیشیز پاپولیشن ٹیکسانومی سو اسپیشیز ٹیکسون ہیز ڈیولپڈ ایز اے جیوگرافکل ویریبل Uh, and it is an aggregate of population uh, which has uh, replaced the concept of morphological species concept or um, morpho species by biological species concept so um, when we are working on the biological species concept uh, we do not being taxonomists we, we do not like to have duplicates or tripli triplicates uh, and they are not attractive in taxonomy for us Uh, rather taxonomists uh, need to sample species uh, from various localities uh, and a range of localities to estimate the range of characters of a species the characters uh, are measured they are counted and they are subject to statistical statistical analysis for population taxonomy and they are further analyzed so population taxonomy has improved the field of systematics Um, by the introduction of simplification of the process and introduction of the polytypic species um, basically led to the conceptual study of the evolution the work of population taxonomy not only led to the simplification of the taxonomy through the introduction of polytypic species it added a new approach to the study of evolution and uh, it helped in the introduction of the population concept in biology next is population structure the division of subspecies into uh, uh, the division of species into subspecies is irreasonable as at times it is quite misleading and takes us away from the actual information um, of the population species consists of a number of deems a deem is a local population of a species uh, the community of potentially interbreeding individuals at a given locality however if we compare it with a spe with a subspecies uh, a subspecies is an aggregate of phenotypically similar population of a species in a geographic uh, subdivision of the range uh, of that species and differs taxon taxonomically from other populations of that species um, so that this is the major difference between a deem and a subspecies a deem is at a smaller uh, level which is a local population of a species um, and uh, a subspecies is an aggregate of phenotypically similar population of a species in a geographic subdivision when we have to study species from population standpoint uh, we study in terms of three major population phenomena and uh, number one is the population continuum number two is the geographic isolate and number three is the zone of Uh, secondary interpretation the population continuum this is a large part where many species range the central portion uh, especially is an area where many populations share their uh, border line there are sometimes habitat break however they there may be steady dispersal resulting in gene exchange or gene flow among populations due to this variations are clinal that is uh, the gradual change in a character so if you look at the opposite ends of the continuum there might be a drastic difference in the characters and they may be uh, called subspecies in uh, in mapping uh, a species and subspecies we uh, use isopheme isopheme is a basically a line uh, at right angle to the cline this line connects points of equal expression of a variable mm. next is the geographic isolate the area where there is no gene exchange of populations with that of the other population of the same species uh, this is called the geographic isolate these isolates are mostly present at the peripheral region of a species with such a great difference that they are designated as sub subspecies 
this geographic isolate is extremely important as it is the incipient species and it is a uh, it is a unit of uh, evolution the zone of secondary intergradation the intergradation of characters occur where the two geographic isolates breed to produce fertile offspring and this intergradation depends on the difference of characters the two isolates had achieved during their isolating mechanism the methods of uh, the population analysis do not reject the previously adopted methods uh, but it is basically an extension th to the classical mm, method for taxonomic analysis and uh, population sampling the new systematics with the introduction of the new systematics the taxonomists started thinking of themselves as biologists uh, rather than as filing clerks the workers are conscious uh, at all times that they are classifying organisms not the remains uh, of the organisms or their mere name uh, so because most of the criteria is biological in nature so they they need to move into the nature as well they look at the or organism as an organism as a living organism and it looks at its population and then it tries to understand that what taxonomy unit should it be assigned or what taxa should be assigned to this particular species as a consequence they place uh, considerable emphasis on so called biological characters uh, that is on morphological information non morphological information derived from behavior physiology biochemistry ecology and uh, so forth and even um, now uh, we are there are many uh, labs working on the chemical taxonomy of the animals and uh, that is uh, being further um, uh, working on uh, they are further working on uh, the drug production or the drug discovery or natural product discovery uh, using all these uh, living animals as mm, as a potent source they appreciate the fact that all organisms occur in a nature as members of population and that specimens cannot be uh, understood and properly classified unless they are treated as samples of natural population so that has to be done in the natural uh, population as a consequence they attempt to collect statistically adequate samples and what adequate would be how we can decide an adequate that depends upon um, the con a particular uh, that depends on the objectives of our study that what uh, what how much sample would be adequate the attempt to collect a statistically adequate samples which in case of variable species would amount to hundreds or thousands of specimens in order to be able to undertake a study of uh, individual and geographic variation with the help of the best biometric and statistical tools if we attempt to describe the current model of the new systematics um, the utilization of an ever increased number of kinds of characters um, has been introduced in contrast to the single character classification uh, as we were using in the uh, classical taxonomy so the new systematics has become a bit more improved and a ready acceptance of new tools and techniques has been introduced uh, various uh, various ways are have been uh, found to identify to uh, analyze a population uh, as we have shown in here the visual analysis by sonogram uh, to try to interpret the differences in the sounds of the insects and uh, frogs and birds and number 2 the analysis of the courtship displays and their behavior has become a very important part of the taxonomy ethology has become has played a very important role the utilization of biochemical characters uh, particularly those yielded by various methods of protein analysis we have uh, a number of examples uh, in which uh, scientists have been able to um, uh, to to infer uh, the, uh, spe uh, the 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 taxonomically different species so if uh, we use we, uh, and we have the details of all these uh, parameters 
in the uh, next lecture that would be intrapopulational variations and how we use those variations. And then uh, there would be another uh, lecture on the taxonomic characters, valid taxonomic characters with high weightage. And they would also be uh, explaining you that how this new systematics has supported us. This is just a discussion. This is just a, this is just, uh, we are just taking a gist of uh, the basics of the new systematics. Then the utilization of computers uh, reduced the danger of subjectivity in the character evaluation. And uh, there, were many, there are many programs, there are many softwares which support us for the identification uh, purpose. So the next is a further clarification of concepts has been uh, given by the new systematics. Number one, a clearer separation of taxon from category. How, what, what is the difference between a taxon and what is the uh, and a category? Uh, the recognition of subspecies as category, which is and it is not an evolutionary unit. And number three, a clearer understanding of the causes of similarities and differences. Um, if there are, if the animals are similar, then there are certain biological reasons to their similarities. And if the animals are different, then there are certain bi uh, biological reasons to the differences of those particular animals which uh, and, and uh, depending upon or basing our but, uh, and we base our knowledge on those particular facts and we identify uh, uh, animals into species by detailed analysis of using the current model of the new systematic.